Hello, my friends. My name is Don Paris, and I'm speaking to you from the Parish of St. Anne's here in Toronto. It's a real delight to be with you again for another video. Uh, I decided to start doing a new series here at St. Anne's, uh, a series of videos that talk about different aspects of our faith, and I thought this weekend would be a good start because we're going to be starting something new here at St. Anne's uh, for September. Many of you might be familiar with it in the Anglican Church, like the secular calendar, we have various seasons and holidays, or what we call holy days, throughout the course of the year. And those seasons and holy days are marked by various artistic elements, you know, such as different types of music or different decorations or different flowers, but even more so by what we call liturgical color. So in my hand here, you'll see that I have a red stole. Now, many of you, I imagine, probably are curious as to why these colors change throughout the year and why these specific colors that we use. And that's actually a really good question. Let me back up a little bit. Christianity, or mainstream Christianity, or early church, it was very early on had adapted the use of vestments. Now, much of the vestments that we wear come to us from the Roman imperial system and the judicial system. The stole, for example, which I'm holding here in my hand, this very long, narrow band of cloth, was traditionally worn by those in authority, and it was a sign of their authority. Now, most of you, when you come to Eucharist, you don't actually see this vestment. You see maybe the end of it. The stole is often worn underneath the chasuble because the chasuble is a sign of humility. At some point, I'll talk more about these symbols, but you'll notice that we have a red color here. Red, historically, and still to this day, in the Western Christian Church, was symbolic of the Holy Spirit, symbolic of martyrs. Uh, it wasn't, it's not worn too often in the church's ear because of that. It's simply just for certain occasions. In recent times, red has become more and more often, particularly if you go to the United Kingdom and the Church of England, for example, uh, they've started wearing red from the Feast of All Saints all the way up to the Feast of Christ King, just before Advent. We also have a series of other colors. Now, most of you are probably familiar with other colors, such as green, uh, uh, violet, or purple. Uh, we also have a white, uh, and you probably have even seen we have, in some cases, black as well as blue. How did we come about with these color schemes? There's a lot of debate about how they came about, and from what we can tell for the most part is that it was largely local custom, and certain local customs spread throughout the church. Uh, many of the colors that we have go back at least, I would say, to the uh, medieval period, uh, probably even before that, but the scheme that we have today relatively comes from about that time. And in the Anglican Church, here in Canada in particular, we've adopted what is known as more the Roman custom, so to say. So certain churches in, in the Christian Church took on greater prominence, and for that reason, many of their liturgical customs and traditions spread. So in the Church of Rome, the Church of Rome, what, where the Pope is today, that became the predominant church within Western Christianity. And Rome had very clearly defined liturgical colors, white being for Christmas and Easter and for certain saints' days, uh, violet for uh, Advent and Lent and red for Palm Sunday uh, for a feast of martyrs and for the Holy Spirit and so forth. And black was worn for uh, feasts of, for those who have died. In the Anglican Church, in the Church of England, what we know today, had its own set of colors. In fact, in the Anglican Church, we have additional colors to what you see in the Roman Church. Uh, in the Anglican Church, we even have blue for Mary, the Mother of God or even blue for use during uh, Advent. We too use red, white, green, uh, violet, as well as a color known as uh, Lenten Array, which is a very off-white color that's used during Lent. It's like a sackcloth color. 
Again, all these colors came about more as what was local custom. Each major church started to use a particular color for a particular season. And in some sense, we gave meaning to those colors. What's interesting is you see variations in the colors. For those of you who've been longtime Anglicans, you'll know that on the Feast of Pentecost, in the Western Church at least, we always use red because as I said earlier, red is often symbolic of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God's love. But if you go to Orthodox churches, they don't actually wear red on Pentecost, they wear green because they understand the Holy Spirit as the Lord and giver of life. And so green was symbolic of life, much of like the plants and the trees that we see. So much of the meaning that we get actually comes to us from very natural signs and wonders. They are colors that we associate with, with these things and so have incorporated into our worship. Now you might be wondering, why am I going on and on all about this color? I'm doing so because here at St. Anne's, we're gonna be departing from tradition over the next five, six weeks. Traditionally, during the season of Pentecost, we wear green. And many of you have seen that for the past several weeks. We've been wearing green vestments, having green frontals on our altar. And that's a traditional color for the Sundays after Pentecost, or in some areas we call them the Sundays after Trinity Sunday. That's standard, and typically you'll see green all the way up until Advent. It's one of the most common colors within the liturgical tradition. In recent years, and as recent as 2018, the Anglican Church of Canada adopted a, a not necessarily a liturgical season, but a theme for the month of September into early October, known as the season of creation. Now, as I said just a moment ago, it's not a new liturgical season. We're still in the season of Pentecost. But several Christian churches, Catholic, Lutheran, Anglican, uh, a number of the liturgical churches decided to dedicate the month of September and early October to intentional prayer and reflection about our care and concern for God's creation. Now, if any of you have been watching the news, you'll see that our world is in a very dangerous place right now. We're seeing extraordinary floods, incredible drought. I mean, just look at, even here in Ontario, it's been one of the driest summers that we've had in many years. Uh, many of you saw what happened in England, where they saw temperatures that they've never seen before. And quite frankly, I've been there this summer and it's shocking how dry it is. We are in a very dangerous time in our history because we've abused and abused our creation. And the church has become very attentive and says, this is a time for you and I to pray and to really convert, to change our ways and to become more intentional about our care of creation. So we at St. Anne's, we are going to acknowledge and honor the season of creation over the next five weeks, starting with the Sunday. Now, as we were planning this season, I met with a group, a new ministry team that we have here at St. Anne's known as the Worship Ministry Team. It's a group of members, diverse members from the parish, including our music director and myself. And we come together and we try to plan our worship for the coming weeks and what things we're gonna do, what themes we're gonna look at. And what we decided to do was to actually do something very different than other churches. We're starting what we call our own customs here at St. Anne's. And you'll see that with liturgical color. Now you recall a few moments ago, I said we're still in the season of Pentecost. So traditionally in our liturgical books, we're told to wear green. But over the next five weeks, I and Father Stephen will be wearing uh, orangish red or red colors during the next few weeks. And the worship team decided to do that because we wanted to tap into this notion of a color reflecting the turn of the season. As you know, we're entering into autumn in a couple of weeks. And so the colors will start getting the reds and orange. So we thought it would be a good nod to creation and help us further emphasize our need to care for creation. But as I said earlier, red is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And we thought this could be a good time for us to call for the Holy Spirit to inspire within us 
a real love for creation, inspire within us a true desire to repent of our abusive ways of creation, and to call forth the fire of God to come within us to ignite that flame of love for God's creation. So what better color to use than an orangish red scheme over the coming weeks? So you'll notice on the next few Sundays when you come into the church at the altar and the lectern and ambo, they will all have sort of a reddish orange uh, paramount and Father Stephen and I will be wearing a reddish orange. We got a, the church actually has a chasuble that's not quite red, but it has more of an orange color. We'll be wearing that over the coming weeks. My friends, go online sometime, take a look. There's a wide range of colors. As I said earlier, what I've outlined here today is pretty much the basic sort of color scheme. But if you look at the history of the church, we've had a huge range of colors. So what we're doing here at St. Anne's is simply what's been going on in the church for several centuries anyways, having very local customs come into our tradition. I'd be remiss to not say one other final thing and to honor what the committee had decided. The other reason why we chose a reddish orange color for this season is, as many of you know, at the end of this month, Canada will be having the day for truth and reconciliation. And as you know, still to this day, many indigenous persons suffer from incredible injustice and from the continuing effects of colonialism. And we at St. Anne's have made a commitment to continue to work for reconciliation with our indigenous siblings. Now this work is on the part of us, not of those who are indigenous. It's a work on our part to come to learn from our indigenous siblings, but also to name aloud the ways that we have and continue to hurt and wound our indigenous siblings. And so we also thought by using a reddish orange was a nice way to nod to the orange color that often reminds us of our need to reconcile with our indigenous siblings. So my friends, I invite you to join with us in the season of creation. Let's really spend some time reflecting on the beauty of God's creation, but also our vocation. And if you pay attention to baptism, one of the questions we're asked of is, will you care and for God's creation, this is a month where we need to remind ourselves of that. So join us on Sundays. It'd be great to have you. And if you want to learn more about vestment colors or if you want to see some of the vestments that I have, uh, let me know. I can show you. There's, it's amazing. There's a huge range of colors and looks much just like what we have with our regular clothes. So uh, if you're ever curious about this more, send me a note or come by the church and I'd be happy to talk a little bit more about those. My friends, know I'm praying for you, and if there's anything you ever need, don't hesitate to give me a call, shoot me a note, stop by the church. As always, the church is open on Thursdays, and we'd love to have you here. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let his face shine upon you. Take care.